let this video serve as a reminder to each and every artist and entertainer that's out there. Nobody owes you support. This applies to me, you, and everybody else. Though that seems like a basic, obvious statement, actions and expectations show that this sense ain't so common. I get it. You probably think that narcissism is a prerequisite for being an artist, but it doesn't have to be that way. We're not talking about mere disagreement or even having a particular taste. What I'm referring to is the culture in which some people believe as artists that the industry should march to their beat. So much so that when they don't get the support and admiration that they feel they're deserving of, they get frustrated at more successful entertainers or worse, the customers. This is my theory as to why this is the case. The industry standards set people up to have this mindset. Also, the status quo is changing, and that uncertainty has people frightened and confused. For decades, if you were working as a creative in entertainment, you were just a contractor. This is especially the case for the mainstream product. In other words, outside of potential bonus structures, your paycheck wasn't tied to how well that product did. Sure, performance of a creative project that you were on could help or hurt your career, but you're getting payment for that specific gig regardless. So most creators have someone else taking the risk and subsidizing their creativity. You never really answered to the customers. For a very long time, what was considered mainstream was just a system cycling through what they deemed as proper channels. This system was obviously created by and to benefit the mainstream. It was designed to preserve it. In order to get this gig, you needed to go to that school and to be trained by that establishment. To get this gig, you needed to be vouched for by someone that already went through that system, etc. This is why I kept telling you not to look at the actors and writers unions like a resistance to the mega corporation. No, they are very much a part of the machine. They ice out those that are not part of their unions and their deals are with the mega corporations predominantly. This is why trying to build largely outside of working with the AMPTP wasn't remotely considered. It wasn't even on the table despite that being a perfect time to do so. Once upon a time, everybody hit a ceiling. You simply couldn't be that successful unless you were doing the mainstream thing. So you have a sense of entitlement by creators that were all churned through this same system. Going through that system gave them a sense of importance they don't want to feel like they've been duped or they wasted their time, so they'll always be protective of the status quo. They'll always feel that their opinion is the opinion because they think they speak from a sense of authority. It's a classic sense of elitism. The thing that changed in recent years is through the power of the internet and technology, the means got decentralized and made more affordable. The ceiling is no longer there and the barrier of entry has been lowered. But this is a very recent phenomenon. So the vast majority of the workers are still people that were all cogs in the machine. They don't know any better. They want their time and affiliation to be validated. And some still think that money just comes out of thin air because they're contractors. But in addition to decentralization came the rise of social media. So now those creatives have no problem being public about their feelings on various topics where they really messed up is that they started to publicly treat the customers with contempt. If you were a fan of a property and you took exception to a recent installment, you were told that you were all this and the phobes. God forbid you didn't vote in a way that they expected you to. So you learn who these creatives actually were, all while their status quo was being threatened. Here's the truth. As much as it may hurt your ego, the primary group of people that matter are the ones you're trying to entertain. It's not your establishment or your peers that went through it. The customers don't generally care what school you went to, or who you trained with, who co-signs you. Is the product sufficient to that target audience? That's all that really matters. See, now you have a rise of the independence. Some just started, some have detached themselves from the status quo. This angers the establishment members because they feel that you're skipping the line. They feel more deserving because they think because they've gone through this system, they are far more deserving than you are. They're the equivalent of little baby gangsters trying to check someone that moved into a neighborhood. Little boy, if you don't go on somewhere. Being mad at the independents will not get you more support. That's because you're not old support. If you want people's attention and money, earn it. 
but you're realizing that your control over the space is dwindling and clout is about the only thing you'll be able to cling to when the new generation of talent that was detached from the status quo start to manifest into successful, profitable assets. We're only at the beginning and you can't stop the inevitable. Up next for the Riververse this fall is Alpha Core number one, written by one of the most prolific writers of all time, Chuck Dixon. Penciled by the legendary Joe Bennett, you're not going to want to miss this book. Visit Riververse.com to stay up to date and grab ISOM number one to get caught up on the first appearance of Alpha Core.